Valve is no saint, but People Make Games got a lot wrong in their most recent video. First off, though, I want to say that I do appreciate People Make Games. Their, their fearless investigative journalism is critical. They've made many videos that I have loved and truly appreciated. If it's exposing Roblox's basically criminal enterprise of exploiting kids and their creativity, or Valve's complicity with the Counter-Strike gambling scene. The work they do is important and absolutely necessary, and I commend them for it. Gambling, especially when it's targeted at children in the gaming industry, is a huge problem that needs to be laid bare for the crimes that they are. Valve, Roblox, EA, and other companies need to be held accountable, and video exposés like this are the first step in that process. So you can understand why I was surprised to see a new video by Quentin Smith and his compatriots at People Make Games releasing their video about what it's like to work at Valve. While I watched the whole video and I encourage you to do so as well, I get that it's nearly an hour long and might be hard for many to watch all the way through. Now, look, this is not me defending Valve. As a company, I find their opaqueness and flatness to be as infuriating as Quentin does. Not to mention that I find their flat structure to be absolute humbug. It's not because it isn't as flat as they're trying to claim it is, but it's because there's a mountain of evidence demonstrating that human beings do not get things done without some sort of power structure and leadership. And the fact is, most of what uh, PMG is presenting here is not new or shocking. I mean, it's been known for a long time that the senior employees, and therefore the de facto leadership and decision makers at Valve, have scuttled many titles that were nearly complete. And this has led to much internal strife, especially from newer junior members of the team. Furthermore, I'm not going to disagree that it can be a paranoid and toxic environment for the wrong fit for the company that's been created by the very flatness that they try to project. So I wanted to take a moment and share my thoughts on PMG's video, what I think they got right, and why I'm so disappointed in the video overall. So let's get into it. The biggest issue that I take with Quentin's video is this, the 30% revenue split. You might think that my, my critique of Valve would contradict this. However, I'm an engineer, a programmer, and a businessman, not an anthropologist. My wheelhouse is systems, not people. Steam takes a 30% cut of revenue of all but the highest grossing sales on Steam, and the video proclaims that that 30% cut is not fair. But is a 30% cut too much, though? Spoiler alert, no, it's not. Let's ignore for a moment that when Steam was first released, it was hailed by the industry as being progressive for only taking 30%. This was in contrast with brick and mortar retailers taking 50% or more. And let's forget for a moment the other online retailers also taking 30%. This includes the Nintendo Switch eShop, which obscures this cut behind an NDA, Xbox, PlayStation, as well as Google Play and Apple App Stores. Now, to be fair, Valve's chief competitor in the PC space, Epic Games, has a 12% revenue split. A revenue share in the vein of the siren song, steering developers away from Steam towards Epic's platform. But Tim Sweeney, the head of Epic, has said in no uncertain terms that their 12% cut is unsustainable. He's also said that the company will continue to run their storefront at a loss to try to undermine Steam. However, Epic's store is only that. A storefront, offering little else for their customers or game developers beyond the place to buy a game. Meanwhile, Steam offers not just a storefront, but a whole app ecosystem. We're talking APIs, we're talking services, and now even hardware that benefits developers and players. Things that add value to games and the time spent playing them. In-home streaming, remote play together, Steam Input, and the Steam Deck are just to name a few. And let's not forget that software on Steam is often massive in the tens or hundreds of gigabytes. Valve offers virtually unlimited CDN storage and bandwidth for the distribution of games at no additional cost to gamers or developers. It's all covered by the 30% revenue share, not to mention the other infrastructure that Steam offers customers free of charge. Anti-cheat, dedicated server distribution, leaderboards, cloud save games, and more. Valve's basically operating their own Xbox Live or PlayStation Plus, but without charging for the service. That has to come from somewhere. Last but not least, Valve is directly contributing to a more open PC platform by paying outside developers to build free and open source software, 
which is stuff that they rely on much like the rest of the world. It's software that is incorporated into Steam, the Steam Deck, their VR headsets, and more. Software like Proton, KDE Plasma, the Linux kernel, DXVK, all the while making the software world a tangibly better place and helping to further the cause of software freedom. This is unlike many of the other massive companies who use and profit from, but rarely contribute back to free software. The thing is, I like and respect people make games and the work that they do. They are well within their right to call out Valve and other companies for disreputable business practices. That's why I feel like this last video was such a gut punch to me. Not because I'm a Valve fanboy, though I'm sure that there are folks who will cite this video as proof that I am, but because this video felt like a meandering diatribe that really didn't have a point or a conclusion. But what's worse about all of this is that the presentation wanted you to think that there was something important that they were trying to say. I did actually write a longer article about this uh, but considering YouTube's uh, content guidelines, I decided to leave most of it out. Head over to ViewSync.com to check out the longer article about this, uh, and I'll see you over there. I'd like to know what you think, though. What's your take on all of this? Leave me a comment and let me know. I would love to hear from you. I want to give a special shout out to my friends over on Patreon and my YouTube members. It's because of these fine folks that I am able to continue making videos just like this one. If you believe in the work that I'm doing and you want to help this show grow, consider making your pledge with the links below and thanks. That's going to do it for now, though. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today, and I'll see you next time.